and 10 days later, he had JavaScript. Much of the modern internet is impacted by one programming language, and it provides a level of interactivity and finesse that used to not exist. That language is JavaScript. Now, if you're watching this channel, I'm pretty sure that you've heard of JavaScript before, but do you know who created it? It was Brendan Eich in 1995. No, JavaScript isn't a different type of Java, but Java did impact the naming of what was going to become JavaScript. See, there was this little company called Netscape, and they were looking to compete with Microsoft. Since this was 1995, internet browsers were just taking off in something that was going to become the browser wars. And they were specifically looking to compete with Microsoft's brand new groundbreaking Internet Explorer. Netscape wanted that killer app feature. And at the time there was HTML and CSS was this kind of budding new feature that hadn't really been figured out yet. And so they wanted JavaScript to be this glue-like language to bring things together so that everybody could use it. So they recruited Brendan, they told him something funny about Scheme in the browser, that's another story, and he got to work. And 10 days later, he had JavaScript. He created the whole language in 10 days. Okay, so that's great and all, but what is JavaScript still good for today? Well, it still is this glue-like language that we use for pretty much all web development in the browser, but you can also run it server-side with Node.js. You can even make desktop applications with Electron.js. There's even fr mobile frameworks like React Native, and there's brand new functionality that continues to come to the browser with the lower level subset of JavaScript called ASM.js or Assembly or Assembler.js. So JavaScript has exploded. It's probably the most popular language that is known in all of software development right now. And web development is becoming something that it is never was intended to be at the beginning. It's really, it's really taken off to kind of become something of its own. So for each one of those use cases that I just mentioned, they really come with their own set of tools and configurations. And it, sometimes it can be a bit much, but if you just want to get involved with JavaScript, learn the syntax, and get your hands dirty a little bit, all you need is the browser that you already have. See here, we have Chrome open, and you can do this with any browser, but I'm using Chrome just because it's the most popular. We're going to open the menu up here, go down to More Tools, and then Open Developer Tools. A nice keyboard shortcut for this is also Command-Shift-I. I believe if you're on Mac OS, it should be um, Option-Shift-I, I believe. Um, but either way, just open the Developer Tools, and directly from in here, we can start typing JavaScript right away and it'll, and it'll execute. So we can give a little console.log and we can say hello world. And you can see how many times I've done this demo. And immediately after we type it, we just hit enter and it prints out the message right there. So we can print pretty much any message that we want. We also have access to some basic arithmetic. So we can say two plus two, we get four. Um, to minus two or two minus three, negative one. Um, we can do two or four modulo two, get zero. The other thing that we can do, and this is where you really start to see some of the possibilities of what JavaScript is able to do if you've never seen it before. We can type something called, we can say document, and you see my browser window has now turned blue, dot body, and then press enter. And what this does, now it printed out this really big line of all these HTML elements. And so if we open it up, we see even more HTML in embedded inside of it. And what this is, is that every time that I mouse over this and my browser window turns blue, this is the browser saying that I've highlighted something that's already loaded in the client. So you can see that we're at the Google homepage, google.com, so we're at the Google homepage and what we've done by selecting document.body is we've essentially gained access to everything that's already loaded inside the browser window. Now I'm not going to go deep into the into document and how to manipulate it with JavaScript in this video, but this is just to pique your interest about what is possible from within here. You can see that it really pulls back the curtains and you can really begin to play around with everything that's in the browser directly right here from developer tools. All right, so in this video, I just wanted to pique your interest about JavaScript and how much you can do with it inside the browser. If you like this video, feel free to go ahead and give it a like, subscribe while you're down there, and if you wanna see what else is coming up with JavaScript, go ahead and check out the next video that's up here. Until then, keep building.